morning, Kinoe members. Thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Kinoe TV. Uh, before I start this morning, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm coming to you all from. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which each and every one of us are tuning in from and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd like to also extend those respects to any Indigenous people who are joining us uh, for this presentation. As usual, I'd just like to also take a moment to remind our viewers of the support services currently available for Kinoe members, uh, as we have recently introduced some additional services and grants. The first support package on offer, which is in collaboration with Kinoe member Claystone Marketing, is free access to Claystone's social media and marketing course. The course provides an overview of social media marketing strategies and tools, which helps highlight marketing opportunities for Indigenous businesses. It's a great resource and it's really helpful uh, for businesses looking to solidify their online presence. In another collaborative effort, Kinoe is excited to partner with Boost Legal Templates. Designed for small businesses, Boost Legal Templates gives you clarity, safety and access to real quality legal templates. Uh, just complete the friendly questionnaire and you will instantly receive your own legal template, which you can take pride in knowing it has been created specifically for your business. This collaboration will save member businesses time, money and ensures businesses are on the go while implementing good business governance. Kinaway is proud to offer members a 25% discount across all Boost Legal templates. So if you feel this is something you may be interested in, please contact the team here at Kinaway. Another support service we here at Kinaway are proud to deliver is the Business Tax Support Package. Uh, this package provides access to a range of bookkeeping and accounting services, uh, preparation and submission of tax returns and BAS statements, uh, online access to zero myob, tax and payroll obligations and superannuation and work cover obligations to staff. Uh, please note uh, that this support package has been previously suspended as we were processing a number of applications, but we're pleased to announce that due to popular demand, this uh, package is back and readily available for our members. So again, if you feel you'd like to access these services, please jump onto the QA website to register your interest. As you are probably all aware of as well, uh, we currently have our QA member uh, business pulse check survey out. Uh, this survey seeks to understand the status, operating challenges and needs of Kinaway members. Uh, participating in this survey helps Kinaway to effectively negotiate for resources and support for Aboriginal businesses and the sector. So I'd encourage all of our members who are yet to complete the survey to jump on and fill it out. More importantly, uh, you'll also receive $220 worth of gifts for completing the survey, uh, which include a $100 naked wine uh, voucher, um, a gift from Indigenous Business Australia, uh, chocolate bars from Kinaway member Jala Jala Treats, uh, a personalised Kinaway notebook, uh, as well as entry into a draw to win even more prizes. So there's pl plenty in the survey for all, uh, so please jump on and complete uh, when you get a chance. I'd like to also take this opportunity to make member businesses aware of the Victorian Government First People's COVID-19 Business Support Fund designed to support Victorian Aboriginal businesses that have been affected by trading restrictions. Uh, these grants can be used to help meet, meet business costs, including rent and salaries, uh, develop marketing activities or pivot the business offering in response to the current economic environment. Eligible businesses will be provided with a one-off grant of up to $10,000. Please note that there is a criteria for for eligibility. So again, please jump onto the Kinoe website to find out more information. I'd just like to also mention the confidential phone crisis line for Victorian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people launched by the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service. Uh, this service is for Indigenous people and families who feel they may need to have a yarn with someone about their wellbeing. Uh, this 1800 helpline is a statewide social and emotional wellbeing service um, and the number is 1800-959563 and operates seven days a week from 12 uh, p.m. to 10 p.m. and you'll find their contact information on the screen throughout today's webinar. And finally, uh, there are plenty of webinars on various topics available on the Kinaway Facebook and YouTube channels. So please feel free to jump on at any stage and make yourself familiar with the content. Along with the webinars and support packages mentioned, uh, Kinaway is still offering the usual forms of business support for our members. So if you feel you may need assistance or support of any kind, please feel free to get in, the con to get in contact with the team here at Kinaway. That's about enough from me. Uh, for today's webinar, we have uh, Leon Egan, uh, Niru Gasavi, and Soyun uh, Puyadasa as they present on the Waraparin uh, Indigenous Civil Construction Project, a 100% owned civil construction business in Victoria created through the collaboration of Melbourne Water and its service delivery partner, Aqua Metro Services. The initiative ties into a range of organisational uh, sector, social, and government contexts. This is a webinar we've been working on for a while now. We're really excited uh, to be hosting Leon, Niru and Soyon uh, as they dissect such a business model and the uh, innovative and empowering nature of such a project. 
For those tuning in, please feel free to post your questions or comments on Kinaway Facebook or YouTube channels, as we will be answering any questions we may receive throughout after their presentation. We hope you enjoy the webinar, and as always, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the Kinaway notifications. I'd like to welcome Leon Nuru and Soyon for this morning's presentation. Uh, good morning, all, and uh, and James. Uh, thanks, thanks for the introduction, and and to everyone. Yeah, you know, thanks for the for the opportunity to to share the journey of of Wara Paring uh, thus far. Um, and the name Wara Paring um, is a, is a name that um, my business partners and I come up with, and and it was it was very purposeful um, and and relevant to to the opportunity um, that we currently have in front of us, and. And the, the meaning of Waraparing means to come walk the path together. And where Waraparing comes from is the uh, Wemba Wemba language. Um, so, and with me today is, uh, is Nuru Gasavi, uh, the Director of uh, Major Program Delivery at Melbourne Water, uh, and also Soyan Punyadasa, uh, one of the owners and the Social Procurement Lead at, at Acro Metro Services. Um, uh, Nauru, over to you just to, to quickly introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, um, my name is Nauru Gasavi. Um, I'm a program director for uh, major program delivery in Melbourne Water. Uh, as you know, Melbourne Water is a, is a service provider and a core to that is um, the community uh, and our value sets are designed around the community. So this particular project uh, what appearing is is very close to uh, most of us in in the leadership team, and we'll talk about it as, as we go through this presentation. Thanks, Leon. Thanks, uh, Nauru and uh, Soyan. Uh, thank you, Leon. My name is Soyan Punidasa. I work, as Leon said, at Aquametra Services, which sometimes we abbreviate and and call it AMS. Um, which is a design and construction company that services Melbourne Water on their small scale capital projects program. Um, as Leon said, I have a significant passion for social procurement and inclusion and diversity, and I'm so proud to work in collaboration with both Melbourne Water and Warapring on this important project. Mm, yep. Th thank you, Soyan, and um, we'll hear quite a bit more from both uh, Nauru and Soyan uh, as we go through the presentation. And um, and I'm very grateful that you know we are Warapringing um, on this journey and walking this path together uh, with with Melbourne Water and Acrometro Services. Um, now. What I what I've put together, or what we've put together today, is a is a presentation um, which goes for about forty minutes to to give a I guess a really good overview um, and understanding of, of how this has come about. But what I want to start with and, and kick off with first, um, from from my point of view, is is an, a, an appropriate uh, acknowledgement of country from me, um, and it is always an honour for me to to do so. Is I believe that you know this is our collective way of, of demonstrating respect and acknowledgement of our elders and, and ancestors appropriately. So I therefore obviously acknowledge the, the Bunurong peoples and the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation as the first custodians of the land on which I'm fortunate to, to live and work. I respectfully recognise and acknowledge my elders, past and present, and extend this recognition to, to all of our Aboriginal community. And today, like I'm sure all of us, um, acknowledge the past and support aspirations for the future as we continue to walk together in caring for and looking after our land and waterways. How this come about, um, and and like I say before, you know, thanks for the opportunity. And um, I, I'm not the only director of, of Wara Paring. Um, I also have a couple of, of business partners as well um, in Dan Charles and David George. And um, I just, um, as you can see by this photo, um, it's something that we replicated uh, on our first day with Acrometro Services. And I just want to take you back to the, the top photo um, of the three of us when we were um, young fellas, I, I suppose, um, in our in our early 20s. And the significance of this photo is that we've been really good mates for, for a long time. And this photograph was taken after we just won um, that the uh, statewide Aboriginal football carnival. Um, and then obviously the photos um, underneath is, um, you know, when we first started the journey alongside Melbourne Water uh, in early 2019. But I also want to make the point that the only reason that this opportunity has come about for us 
is the commitment and support from both Melbourne Water and Equa Metro Services, um, in which we are really grateful for. Um, and the, over to the next slide here, just about the collaboration in between Melbourne Water uh, and Equa Metro Services. I'll, I'll get Nauru to, to, to touch on the, the first two dot points um, and then Soyan to, to add, add some more value to um, dot points three and four. Uh, thanks, Nauru. Yeah, thanks, Leon. So in, um, in about late 2016, uh, in Melbourne Water, we, we were actually looking at a capital spend and, um, and looking at there's, there's, there's the amount of work that we can be done slightly differently rather than using tier one contractors. And uh, we started looking at our uh, behaviors and, and value sets and everything. And it was very clear from, from right from the uh, top management uh, executive team, uh, our um, our MD Michael Wanmaker, our general manager uh, um, Eamon uh, Kelly. They, it was very very clear that what they wanted a very very sustainable model to deliver. So we we thought that if we can put the four S's together, which is a self perform model, safety, social procurement, and a sustainable. So all those four numbers, we thought the best way to go into the market and select a partner that can actually walk with us, have an absolutely agile and nimble way of working, and then we together can walk that path. And that's why we went to the market and selected, uh, and uh, after an ex extensive procurement process, we selected Acometro Services. So we knew that you know they, they can self-perform. The reason to do that is then we can have that collaboration directly, not with the just the white collar workforce, with the blue collar workforce, we can talk to them, understand them better. Then second thing was safety and the social procurement. The social procurement is an angle where our actually war of hearing journey started. And on that program, because we have a capital program, uh, the major capital program delivery is about $300 million plus. There was a small scale capital program, which is SSCP program we call. There's a bundle of small projects that we bundle together. Uh, they are in a, in, a, in a vicinity about 25 to $30 million a year. And the contract we have given Aquametro Services is seven years. So that's where the sustainability comes in. That's where we thought we get some initiatives run and then systematically build them. So you can see started in 2017 and Leon will talk about it, but that how it takes for a bigger initiative to start. And we are very, very, very happy and, and proud that what we have achieved today. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, um, I, I just I, want to move into bullet point three, which is um, Melbourne Water have been very clear throughout the journey and saying AMS is not a contractor, AMS is a service provider, service delivery provider for Melbourne Water. And why is this so? Well, it's because Melbourne Water want to work with us collaboratively to deliver upon Melbourne Water's vision. And a specific objective of this was creating meaningful opportunities for Aboriginal Australia. And one of the first things we did was we wanted to collectively create a team of passionate people in this area of social procurement. And, and, and I really want to name these people because they are actually very senior people in both organizations of Melbourne Water and Aquametro Services who are genuinely passionate. From Eamon Kelly, who's a general manager at MPD, Niru, who's with us today, Vianne Hill from Strategic Procurement at Melbourne Water, but then also from Aquametro Services, particularly Marcus Wade, who's an owner and director of AMS, so he's the, he's the boss, <laughs> and uh, myself. So it was the team that was brought together and we have maintained that passion for the journey and we will continue to do so. And I really want to talk about that last quote that's at the bottom of the slide, which is what Niru said to um, AMS broader team at one of our initial mobilization workshops. And he actually talked to our field staff who are very dear to us. He said, I want you to believe that if I can do something, then you can do it. And together we can do it. Together we can. And that is such a powerful message, Niru. And I appreciate what you said then. Um, and it, it holds true for everything we do on the program, including Warapering. Mm. Thanks, Nuru, and, uh, and thanks, Soyan. 
And I, I just want to sort of roll back um, uh, quite a few years ago now, I, I suppose, when when I first got introduced to to Soyan Punyadasa through Daniel Charles, who who is now you know uh, one of my business partners. And um, as we can see, the photograph over on the on the right hand side on my left is is um, is Soyan, uh, and on my right is is one of the young uh, Ali, who was one of the young uh, grad engineers at the time. And um, when Dan uh, connected me with Soyan. Soyan was looking for someone who could add value and provide advice and support to the indigenous components of that tender. And at the time, I was uh, doing some you know, some consulting work, and um, and and Soyan, you know, obviously, we connected, and and I, I was able to sort of support, you know, that that tender process at the time, um, you know, to to where we are today. So I'll just get Soyan to, to touch on the, the second two uh, dot points here and um, and add some more value. Thanks, Soyan. Thank you, Leon. I just want to say as, on behalf of Aquamental Services, we made some significant promises in our tender and EOI submissions to Melbourne Water. And the first one was we said we would develop supply relationships with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander businesses. But number two was a, a sort of a, a stretch for us, which was we were going to develop opportunities to improve and increase Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander employment outcomes within our workplaces. But we said that we would do this together with Melbourne Water in collaboration. So that was really, really, really important. And I just want to touch on that last bullet point, which is the crux of many things that are going to be discussed today, which is Indigenous cultural awareness understanding before taking action, all throughout the tender and the EOI, uh, which is an expression of interest. Leon gave us very clear advice at the start of this journey and throughout the journey. He said, don't just rush off and try to do something. Please take time to understand why Aboriginal Australia is where it's at today. And to do that, you need to undertake our cultural awareness training. Then collectively, we'll work out what we do together. It was absolutely the best advice. So I thank you very much, Leon, for that. Mm, yep. Well, and obviously where where we are today, and and I so we're, so we're fast tracking from 2016, and and Soyan and I continued discussion for quite some time, and Melbourne, uh, so Acrometro Services were identified as the as the preferred supplier um, to deliver the small scale capital works, and Soyan invited me back in um, when I as part of my um, consulting company, uh, Bunji Galang. Um, and Bunji Galang means to share my and or our story. And this is the platform that, I, that I've used for, for my cultural awareness training. So in November of 18, 2018, I was provided with the opportunity to facilitate the first cultural awareness training program for the leadership of Melbourne Water, but also the, um, and in particular, the, the major program delivery people and also the leadership of Acrometro Services. And the workshop that I, that I always deliver is understanding why understanding why Aboriginal Australia is still where it is today. And, um, and I and was part of the, you know, part of this training. Um, the second one, I also was able to provide, now that we, after the first workshop, <coughs> understanding why, where to now? Now that we understand why Aboriginal Australia is still where it is today, where to now? And what this provided me with as a facilitator and an Aboriginal person, it gave me an opportunity to, to challenge Melbourne Water and also Wacker Metro Services. And what I spoke about quite a bit was what does Indigenous opportunity look like within Melbourne Water and also Wacker Metro Services? So what I will do just for the minute is park um, the, the significance of, of Workshop 2 um, with the knowledge that um, I felt really comfortable with the level of understanding that I was getting back from, from both Melbourne Water and Acrometro Services. And I'm an enormous supporter of Reconciliation Australia and what the Reconciliation Movement does. And, and what, what the Reconciliation Movement has pr provided me with, it provided me with the level of comfort that I was with the right people with Melbourne Water and Acro Metro Services. Because of this, all Australians, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, moving forward together whilst acknowledging and learning, for the, and learning from the past. And that is one of the reconciliation movement's mantras. And I was really comfortable with that because I, 
within Melbourne Water and Acro Metro Services, everyone understood that came to the training. And there was a real desire and desire to understand and a willingness to play a role moving forward. And now 15 months down the track with, you know, with the Warapring project, I know that Melbourne Water and Acro Metro Services are and will continue to make a difference. And if we can all recognise, understand and commit, we will achieve meaningful reconciliation um, together. And one of the catalysts for, for where we are now was the training that I was able to facilitate um, you know, as part of my consulting company. Um, so rather than me, I guess, talking about the impact that I had on it, um, I think it's appropriate that Nauru and Soyan um, share their part of the story as well um, about, about the training. Thank, thanks, Leon. I, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think that it, for it, any, any great thing, there's a turning point. There's a point where you think, yep, that's where it started. For this journey, for war appearing, your first awareness training, that was the start. Because there's a lot of policy, there's a lot, a lot of initiatives that we run. It's, it's been all discussed at, at a very high level, at exec level, and then we pass those policies through, and people do follow them blindly without understanding why. And I think what you did, and initially, we, 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 I should admit, we were all, but a principle about is just, it's an another, just an awareness education, cultural education thing. But man, when it, that, you know, when, when it happened, it, it's, it, it actually gave us a complete perspective about why we need to do this why and you can you could you could see that mm -hmm. as soon as the first one was done we all were actually into the second mode of where to now where what we should be doing we didn't even think about it, it was and i think from my point of view uh leon you just uh, hit, the, hit the nail on it, that that awareness training is a start to to anything what we do and who is watching this in need to explain to the community why why we're doing it. And then all other strategies, policies, everything will follow it. And I think so, and that's the discussion we had when mm -hmm. we start this uh, awareness training. Absolutely, I, I, I perfectly said, Nero. I, I honestly believe this has been the most impactful training I've ever had in my life, Leon, your, your cultural awareness training. I actually gained an understanding of our Australian history that I never even knew before. Um, and I think I, I, I speak for many people in that training. We, we just didn't know that history. Um, it was very emotional, very moving. Um, the training actually, what a really good thing it did, it was it connected our heads and our hearts around the why piece. Um, but like Nehru, I was left very motivated to say, well, now that I know all this, what can I and we do about it, which is the most important thing. Mm, yep, yep. Thank, thanks, guys. And um, yeah, it's um, and one of the big things that, as you know, part of my training, and I, and this is something that, you know, I, I had thought about for, for a long, long time, and and what I wanted to sort of put together and and have audiences understand, and, and it was also very relevant, um, you know, as part of the, the, the training with, um, with Acrometro Services and Melbourne Water, was the, the significance of the pit of despair. And, I, and so what I've done, I've I done this on a whiteboard um, at the training, and, I, and I've since put it into, um, into a, I, I guess, into a PowerPoint format. And this is what the pit of, pit of despair uh, looks like. And, and on two sides, um, we've got the level playing field. And one of the, the side on the left, I like to refer to as the sad side. And the side on the right, I like to refer to as, as the happy side. And what I'm making reference to is the, the significant decline um, as a result of past government policy um, on, on Aboriginal Australia. And in particular, the contributing factors as to, as to why um, a lot of Aboriginal Australia is still where it is today. And without reading all of these dot points, um, I'll, you know, everyone can have a read of it as we sort of go through. But all Aboriginal people, you know, for the you know, people that are, that are online now watching and listening, we, we all know this. And it's stuff that, that we've all been impacted on, um, you know, right throughout our lives. And, um, you know, the, the past government policy stuff finished a long time ago. However, the impact of, of all these contributing factors is still very relevant today. 
And what it's done, it's created this water level in the pit of despair. And a lot of our community are in this pit of despair at different levels, um, as we can see here by, by these images. And, you know, sort of right down the bottom of the pit and some are at the top of it ready to take their next opportunity. And, and thankfully for, for all of us, Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australia, there is a way out and there is recovery. And we've made some massive, massive inroads into this recovery, I believe. Um, and those contributing factors are supporting people and communities on the way out, on, and they're on the ledge or the steps on the way back up to the level playing field. And I believe what is assisting this, get back up to the level playing field, there is a, there is a group of significant contributing factors, and maybe not all of them, but I believe these are significant contribu contributing factors to allowing a lot of our people and a lot of our communities get back up onto and rolling on this level playing field. And when I showed this as part of the training, um, it had a significant impact on, on Nauru. Um, and I'll just ask Nauru to, to I guess, to, to add value and, and share his, uh, his lived experience of uh, and recognising the, the pit of despair. Thanks, Nauru. Thank Leon, exactly. So when, you know, in, in, in your presentation, when we, when I, I saw pit of despair, obviously there's uh, the Melbourne Water audience in, in the different, different, um, their experience of life, they saw this in a different way. But for, for me particularly, it just hit it hard. It's absolutely hit it hard because all the contributing factors that we, you're trying to tell me right from, you know, racism to the poverty, being there, you know, it, it was just hard. It was hard. It, it was, you know, I come from a very disadvantaged background. I had a difficult childhood and I could just relate that. I could just relate that. But, you know, how, how are you guys going through this? And it, it just kept resonating to me. And then when you start putting the recovery win and say, yep, that's where it, that's where. And I, I'm I'm firm believer of hope. And, I, and, and as you said, and I was just waiting for when you start talking about the contributing factors, I could start watching this and the hope came in. And I said, that's, that's what we need because the hope gives us an opportunity to turn any adversaries into an opportunity. That's what it is. And I'm, I'm so fortunate to work for Melbourne Water because they, at the core value, everyone in right from the board of members to 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 our exec team everyone believes in that we can contribute to the society we can add value add to the society and this this bit of despair is it really sometimes i feel you know i look at it and quite a lot of time i i go through those uh, the number uh, the the actual headings and it just resonates in, in a different way because that's exactly the journey we have done and that's the reason why what i said to you uh so that if i can do I, if I can do this coming from that racial background, that poverty, and if I can be in a position to, to express myself and to help the community, if I can do it, you can do it, and collectively all on this call, we can do it together. And that's where the passion comes from. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, I, and you know, I, I get it. And, you know, we, and as a result of, of facilitating and in particular the, the sharing this this slide um, um, you know to the to the audience as part of the training what it, what it done for us collectively it, it created really strong connection um, which very quickly turned into a, to a strong relationship but also significant trust and this model the whole this whole model of the wiring project has has been built on connection relationships and trust. And I never understood the significant importance of trust until, until Soyan and I were having a conversation a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I'll just ask Soyan just to explain this slide uh, and what we're looking at right now and, and how it all came into play. Thanks, Soyan. Thanks, Leon. So when we were preparing for this presentation today, Leon, Nero and I had a really good yarn about what was the foundation of all this? How did we get this going? And I think we came to the common consensus that it was significant trust, building significant trust and connecting really good people who are passionate about this. And I just want to talk about the trust uh, diagram there. Um, and it really started with um, 
a relationship I've had with a gentleman called Daniel Charles, Dan Charles, um, a proud Aboriginal man. I've known him for almost 10 years in the from the basketball world. We're both coach and we have kids that play together. And, and Daniel's one of the finest coaches you'll ever find um, in, my, in my lifetime. Um, so we had a huge amount of trust. And then the tender came out for from Melbourne Water, the EOI and the tender for small scale. And it was very clear at that moment that Melbourne Water was wanting to create meaningful employment opportunities for Aboriginal business. And I have massive intent, great intent, and really want to do something. But to be honest with you, at that time, I knew very little. So I lent on Dan and said, look, this tender's coming up. We can do something really meaningful for the community. Um, we're passionate about it, but I don't know what to do. I don't have the knowledge. And Dan said, don't worry, Soyen. Go to my cousin, Leon. He's the expert. He will help you. So Dan connected with Leon, and so did I. And we arranged a meeting between Leon and myself. And it was very, very evident there that Leon and I had very common value set and were very aligned. And uh, we built a great relationship, and, and Leon provided us with tremendous advice. In rollover to 2017, and we were very fortunate to win the contract with Melbourne Water. And at that time, um, becoming a service provider, I worked closely with Nuru Gasavi from Melbourne Water, and you just realize straight away that he's absolutely aligned in, in values and vision and, and genuine uh, care for community and, and, and all Australians and wanting all Australians to do well. So then I shared that relationship with Leon through to Nuru, and that was the connection of the, of, of the, the dots, so to speak. So Leon, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the connection of relationships within Waraparing itself? Yeah, absolutely. And and I guess, you know, we just look at the, the top triangle, um, you know, myself, Soyana and Nauru and, you know, which we've just touched on and, and the relationship and, and how the relationship was created. And and essentially it was created through through me facilitating that cultural awareness training. Um, and, and, you know, it's funny how things work in life and, you know, you sort of, you know, in the right place at the right time. But, but I'm also a massive believer that things most certainly happen for a reason. And, you know, Soyan and I you know, created a really strong connection, you know, in partnership with Melbourne Water as well. And, you know, it's sort of when the opportunity came, um, which I'll talk about on the on the next slide to, to identify um, some business partners um, to go on this journey, it was really, really easy for me to, to identify Dan Charles and also Davy George. Um, because I'd you know, grown up with these boys, they come with the right skill set to be able to um, play a role in, in starting, you know, starting off on this journey. So, um, you know, so so that trust, um, that tr little trust network that, that we've been able to create um, has been significant and will be significant going forward as well. And and then Soyan introduced me to and showed me a slide a couple of weeks or showed me an image a couple of weeks ago that looks like this. I'd never heard of this before. And when he showed me this, the trust equation, and I'm reading through it, and two things that really stuck out for me as an Aboriginal person, uh, the bit down the bottom beside the heart, are they focused on my interest or theirs? And it was very clear to me that they knew their stuff. They always delivered, and, and they had always delivered in our, in our conversations. And I felt safe for, 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 our, for our mob, a big thing of of that trust is is feeling safe with the people with the people that you're uh, that you're dealing with and and wanting to create uh, I guess stronger stronger partnerships and relationships with. Um, so, Ian, have you got anything to add here? I think you've done a great job, Leon, um, and then thank you for sharing that that story. It's, it's I think the trust equation is something that that everyone should look at, um, both in your business life, but also in your your, your personal life, um, and try to try to put put together people that you trust significantly, and then test it against the trust equation. Um, it holds true. It's a very very good piece of um, uh, a great great tool for understanding trust. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sam. Um, and how our model was was basically implemented, and, and uh, I guess the significant driver of it um, was probably the yes, the first cultural awareness training workshop, but also significantly the second one, where I challenged both Melbourne Water and Acrometro Services of where to now. And after I finished that that second workshop, 
I understand that there was lots and lots of conversation um, within Melbourne Water on how do they how do they support an Indigenous business model in the civil construction space. Um, and this is a photograph of the of the significant people that that were in the room um, and significant decision makers as well um, that that supported. Um, the, you know, this business model that, you know, that we're um, getting to live at the, uh, right now. And the flow on from, from that workshop in 2018 was on the 10th of April uh, 2019, we were invited into Melbourne Water um, where, and to meet the, um, the GM, uh, Amon Kelly, um, of Major Program Delivery. And, and uh, he provided us with the verbal commitment to support the development of a 100% Indigenous owned uh, civil construction company. Um, and at this time, and um, uh, Soyan and I still have a little bit of a laugh about it today, that um, <coughs> in that top photo, you can see that's aim on, on my left hand side. Um, he's a big man, he's about six foot four or six foot five, uh, English man with an accent. And he said to me, Are you guys fair income? Um, and of course, we all said, yes, we are fair income. And the second question he asked me, he said, why do you want to do this? And my answer was really simple and, and also that of me, my business partners. It's, and it was all about to provide opportunity for Aboriginal young people. So that, that was a really significant date um, in the context of, of where we are today. And that photo, that second photograph, this one here, um, will we'll live on in the, um, hopefully in the, and be a part of the sustainability and success of our story because this was the starting point of it. This is super important as well um, as part of our model. In July uh, 2019, the training plan was set out and it was a really important document because what it told us, it told us where or what we were all going to do, which included that we're all committed and accountable to one another. And this document has most certainly kept us on track right through, throughout that journey um, from, from when we first, when we started our employment, which was on the 5th of August of 2019. Um, mm. We started on the ground, so to speak, Dan, Dave and I in the field with Acrometro Services as part of their crews um, and very relevant, uh, industry relevant employment and training with the view and the commitment and through committed support from Melbourne Water and Acrometro Services, Wara Pring Civil will be ready to launch um, on the 1st of March 21 as an independent and 100% Indigenous owned business focused on the needs of Melbourne Water by way of a providing a service that can meet social procurement goals and extend opportunities to the, to the wider Aboriginal community. And just really quickly, um, I just want to the last 15 months has also been an enormous year of what I would refer to as real, real in capital letters, exposure and training. And what has driven all of this is, is the commitment of the Wairapuring Indigenous Project Training Plan um, that was implemented at, um, back in August of last year, where all parties you know, have played their role in supporting, uh, in, in supporting the journey. And down the left-hand side, it gives you a snapshot of the different types of uh, assets or jo assets and jobs that we worked on with Melbourne Water. And then over on the on the right side, and equally important, probably if not more, really to um, to safeguard us, safeguard us, you know, with setting up a, a startup business, um, is the future capacity training that that Melbourne Water um, have supported us with as well. And. Furthermore, and further, furthering the theme of, of our project exposure um, in, in action, just to give you a, um, a visual understanding, I suppose, of, of what we've been exposed to. And, and, and the big thing for us is that it has all been relevant exposure to the water industry that will most certainly act as, as an enabler in supporting and turning the Wairapuring project into Wairapuring Civil. And as you can see there, um, we get to play with Big boys toys almost on a daily basis. Um, however, it is also can be a very dangerous place. Um, hence, the importance of safety and and Melbourne Water and how they value um, safety 
uh, every day is is super important. And just one more slide, just from a, a snapshot point of view, um, is uh, our tickets, licences, qualifications that, that are all relevant and needed in the water industry, but also in the construction industry. And many of these tickets, licence, qualifications, if you like, um, have been obtained in the last 12 months uh, through significant investment of, of Melbourne Water. And we know that with these tickets and licences, um, we know we're well equipped for the next stage of, a, of our wiring journey. And I know this has, I know from the relationship that has been created, um, how this collaboration links to government policy, but I know that it hasn't been the main driver because I've been able to build this strong relationship and connection with both Melbourne Water and Acro Metro <laughs> Services. So I'll pass over to Nauru and, and Soyan to, to add a little bit more value to, to this slide as well. Yeah, thanks, Leon. Like, you know, we, we, we spoke about it many times that any initiatives which has to be done needs to start from the right point. And that's basically, you know, we, we are lucky that we, we, we found that point very early in the journey. So all these policies we have, um, you know, obviously there's the strategies that uh, any organization runs with, there's a value set they run with, there's a vision what they run with, and, and, and sort of underpinning that is all the government policies. You know, and then there is a there's a big sustainable goals in there, um, SDG goals you call them, and there are lots of policies that we need to follow through. So it becomes a, 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 a pretty much a bureaucratic process if you have a lot of policies around that we need to follow. You know, like a Victorian plan you have, you have Tarumba, uh, we need strategies in there. So there's a lot of policies in there. So what I would suggest and my advice would be to to look at that blue sky that those are the things we need to do break them out into a simple 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 tasks and that's what we did and it was very clear from i keep saying that it's very clear from the top to the bottom and that's for any organization to be successful the vision needs to be the same the drive needs to be the same the passion needs to be the same and it should not be a tick and flick for a policy purpose. There's a lot of tenders, when I was in the private sector, a lot of tenders I've seen, and I, I, I should put my hand up and say, like, and I did a lot of things that I just to take and flick, that, yeah, that's the tender is asking, we should have that. And I think time has now come that we need to be more mature than that and go beyond that. It's not just a tick and flick, policies are there for the governance, policies and strategy are there for us to show the direction, but we need to get into this. So what we did, and I think, um, uh, Leon, I think we, I just want to um, put more emphasis on what you guys did, you know, the training you saw a few slides ago, um, 18 months it took us, right? 18 months it took you guys to, to get into it. it. It was a hard, hard work. So first, any, any incubation period when we go from the business where has an idea, concept comes in, a feasibility comes in, and then an actual direction, is the heavy lifting is done in the first phase. And that first phase, this is where we were worried about. This is where Em and Kelly said to you, are you fading? Are you going to be there? Because we knew this is a hard work and, and it needs a lot of um, tickets to be done, a lot of courses to be done. And we were a bit nervous about it that will you guys go through all this and you did to you to and, and the success of it if it happens tomorrow is leon you guys more than us you actually put the shoulder to the wheel with us and say god let's let's push it through so it's a common thing and i think whoever is listening to this has to understand the first grind is an absolute important you get it right you get the strategy right at that and just don't lose hope just don't lose hope there will be people like us there will be people there there will be organizations like us there will be people like Sion and leo there will be people like that you just need to keep looking at that and keep grinding it i'm pretty sure in 12 months down the track we we we, we thought that leon and this team might lose it they, they might give it away because we they were doing ad hoc teams like you know the excavation at one stage they were doing um uh, pipe jacking at one stage so there was different different thing they're doing it in our mind we were thinking oh this, this is a different grind so just just keep a keep a over overview on it and i think so and you were the good conduit between us and 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 the team that we you could just pass that 
concern back to your team, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I, I actually, that was great, Nuru. I, I think I've always said this, that people create legacies. And remember at the start of this presentation, we, we talked about creating a team of passionate people in social procurement and diversity and inclusion. Um, I think that to me, that was really the key. Right at the start of the contract, Aquametro Services and Melbourne Water got together and actually developed a diverse, uh, diversity and inclusion management plan. At the time, I believe for Melbourne Water, it was the first of its kind with a service provider. And this really ensured that we were absolutely aligned as AMS and Melbourne Water on delivering Melbourne Water's vision in this space. Uh, so in terms of policies and whatnot, that, that was all embedded in that moment. But in addition to that, I totally felt confident then that we were working together and empowered as a team to move forward and to be innovative and to create in collaboration with Melbourne Water and Wara Paring and Aquametro Services new ideas, you know, and doing this for the first time we will hit bumps in the road and, and whatnot, but we can work through it together because we've got the right people on board. Mm -hmm. yep. Thanks, Nuru and, and Soyan. And, and, I, and I, I think it's also worth mentioning that, um, that Melbourne Water have a significant internal driver and that internal driver is that, you know, their, their own commitment to a um, uh, innovate uh, reconciliation action plan. And, and, I, and I do know that Melbourne Water uh, undertook that pathway at the start of 2016. Um, and as we all know, um, you know, the Reconciliation Australia certainly make organisations and businesses and, uh, you know, accountable for, for their commitment uh, to, to reconciliation. Um, so, you know, and obviously, you know, we're, we're collectively, all of us are, you know, hopefully going to be, you know, beneficiaries of that. Um, we're nearly done, but I, I just uh, want to touch on this as well. And, and you know, and the significance of this, and and what happens if this if this business model is successful, and I I know that it will be because I, I know that I've got the right people uh, in our corner, and I'll just get Soyan just to touch on these two dot points really quickly, um, um, and then I'll I'll talk to the to the rest of the um, these dot points as well. Thanks, Soyan. Thanks, Leon. So our hope really is that this model is proven to continue to be successful, and that more people replicate it to create more opportunity for Indigenous Australia and non-Indigenous Australia. Um, I really want to uh, highlight the second bullet point, which is understanding the long game, because it's really important. Melbourne Water, and particularly Eamon Kelly and Nuru Gasavi, um, and Aquametra Services with Marcus Wade, have been very, very clear that the way to create a sustainable business is by building acumen slowly and sustainably. And this requires a commitment to play the long game. Uh, to build capacity and, and capability. And this takes time, investment of resources and time. And if you're willing to do that, you need to understand you've got to play the long game. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And and look, the reality is, and I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer, that the, the beneficiaries will be significant, not only in the Aboriginal community, but the much wider community included. And, and we all we know that Aboriginal business success um, most certainly, certainly leads to investment back into the communities, uh, into our communities, provides real opportunities and sets positive, you know, strong male role models um, that, you know, myself and, and my business partners are, are committed to being. And, you know, and, and I just go down the, down the page slowly with these, um, with these dot points and, and I, I've very deliberately taken these dot points straight out of the social procurement framework and, and in particular, the, the Indigenous element of it because these are evidence-based and it's, which I think is really important. It, it's not about reinventing the wheel. This is what we already know. And I've just added one down the bottom as well. And um, something that I want to do in, uh, into the future is as we hopefully and, and grow our business is um, you know, grow our business into regional Victoria. You know, we're partnering with the with the regional uh, water organisations, but also the the um, shires or, or local governments as well to provide opportunity for for Indigenous employment and employ people, our mob, um, on country to give them that opportunity to stay at home rather than having to move to Melbourne for opportunities. Um, you know, one of the big things that, that is a big part of our responsibilities is looking after looking after our country and waterways, and hopefully we will, we will be able to provide provide that platform. And I know that the 
This overlapping ripple effect is very real and only achievable together. And for that, you know, I know that we've got some really, really good people uh, in our corner. And which takes us to the, the or almost the final slide, and, and it's the identified opportunity um, that that we have um, through lots and lots of discussion and um, and you know ideas and so forth. And and our opportunity is is in the non-destructive digging space, or what we refer to it as NDD. And it gives you uh, just a bit of an overview of of what it's all about. And uh, if you haven't seen these types of trucks before. Um, this is what they look like. Um, so I'll just get Nauru to, to touch on this a little bit um, and, we're, and we're nearly done. Thanks, Nauru. Look, we, what we are looking for, Leon, from the day one was a sustainable model. That's what we're looking at. In, in our mind, as we keep saying throughout our presentation, it's a success, success is in the sustainability of it. So we, we looked at all the tickets you have done, you, all the works you have done, the excavation, the portal and everything. Then we thought, what is there that when we stand this business as a war repairing business, what, how can the business owner reinvest that back into the community? I mean, we, we kept thinking, Eamon and I, that the best way to do is to have some repetitive business, have something which is a reputation on. And then when we looked at our capital program and think, hang on, entity testing, which is, is we do on each and every job on Aquametro services, on other service providers, why can't we then have your team to keep doing that? So that's a reputation, that's learning from there, and it, there's a growth model. You can organically grow it, you know, either from one truck to two and three, you can organically grow that. And then not only just an ended trucks, it needs a lot of things around it. It needs a cleaning to be done, which we have, we subcontracted to others. There's a, a road cleaning, we subcontract to the others. There is the um, uh, traffic management, we do it. There's a small digging, which we do around it. All those small, small packages, which are not a part of NDD, once this model grows, it actually can add on. So your business model, model can organically grow. And that's what we were looking at the sustainability. And there is as much as long as the capital works will go as long as the Aquametro services or any other service provider is working with Melbourne Water. This identified opportunity with war repairing, if it is done safely, diligently, and carefully, we this this has a bright, bright future with us. Thanks, Leon. Thank, thanks, Nauru. And um, and this next slide and, and the final slide, it is um excites me quite a lot um, because. This is our, the logo uh, for Warapurin Civil, and this is the very, very first time um, that it's been shown externally, um, and most certainly out of my office, and um, it's something that, you know, we're super excited about, and, um, you know, the, the whole story behind it in the background is, is super important to us as well. Um, just before we move to, move to questions, I just want to take the opportunity to to wrap up and, and with some of my thoughts outside of this presentation. Um, and, I, and I did share this with, a, I've done a presentation for, um, for some of the GMs of, of, uh, within Melbourne Water about well, probably five or six weeks ago. And, um, and I just want to share this. Um, for quite some time, I've, I've had a genuine dream for, for many years now, and it has been to start a real business that could create positive cultural change for my people that also included mainstream Australia. And I fully understand that the term, I had a dream, gets used quite loosely, but it most certainly wasn't in my case. It has been very real for, for a long period of time. <coughs> I have previously, and genuinely, I have previously had many opportunities to, to partner with, with businesses that were, that were or thought that they were interested in supporting a startup Indigenous business but I was always hesitant and it never sounded or felt right for me and I now know why because it was driven by trust. The trust was never there previously like, like it is now. I have been very fortunate that I have found allies in Soyan Punyadasa and Marcus Wade at Acrometro Services and Amon Kelly and Nauru Gasabi uh, at Melbourne Water. This is the only model that I have seen that was going to have a chance of getting off the ground, all because it is very unique and no one in Victoria has done it before 
and I know it is being championed for the right reasons. Very clearly, I want this to succeed and be sustainable, and I'd love to be able to play a role in sharing this model across the water industry within Victoria and across Australia when the time is right, of course. But I know my people, Aboriginal Australia, have connection to our land and waterways like no other that has forever required us to care for our land and waterways. It is an important responsibility that has been passed down to all of us from our ancestors. Basically, we don't have a choice. It is just what we have to do. It's a part of our DNA. Um, James, thanks for the opportunity. Thanks uh, to Kinaway for providing us this opportunity. And um, I, I think we can open up to, uh, to questions and, and have some Q&A. So um, back to you, James. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thanks, Leon, uh, Soyana and Nero um, for that presentation. It was really interesting and really engaging. I know I enjoyed it and I'm sure our members um, did as well and everyone else who tuned in. So, so thanks for that. Um, we'll, we'll now take the next uh, you know, couple of minutes. We have had a few questions um, come through throughout the presentation. So uh, we'll take the next couple of minutes to address any of those. And the first one uh, we have comes from Jim. Um, he says, thanks for this morning, everyone. Um, enjoyed the webinar. Leon, uh, where is uh, Wipering at this point in time and where do you want to take it? What do you foresee for the business? Mm, um, so where we're at right now, so um, uh, we're uh, 15 months into into the journey and, uh, and it obviously started off in uh, you know, back in August of last year. Um, we originally had a, had a date um, or we thought that we had a date of, of kicking off our, our business. Uh, what has impacted it significantly is um, the significance of COVID, um, and we then it was then pushed out to to the end of the year. Um, but but in the best interest of, of everyone um, and to safeguard the, the startup um, of this model uh, into our business, um, we've now uh, been very fortunate that Melbourne have seen uh, Melbourne Water has seen fit to uh, extend out until uh, the end of February, um, with a view to starting at the start of March. So. Mm. Um, and where do I want to take it? Um, per personally, I would love to be able to um, to continue our growth in the water industry, but also with the full understanding and, and you know um, uh, that you know we're 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 a startup business and we need to be able to crawl before we can walk and and run and then sprint you know years down the track. Um, and I'm really comforted by the fact that we've got really good people in our corner, um, you know, with Melbourne Water and Acro Metro Services. And, you know, I'd like to, you know, um, grow the business, you know, from Melbourne Water to the other water organisations um, in and around the metropolitan area of Melbourne, but then also right across the state of Victoria, you know, creating, you know, strong, sustainable relationships with, with all the org water organisations to ensure or to in the best interest of providing opportunity, uh, employment opportunity for our mob right across the whole state. So hopefully that's what you like. Thanks, Leon. Mm. No, that's great. Thanks, Leon, and thanks, Jim, uh, for the question. Uh, we'll take a couple more. Uh, this, this next one is from Gail. Um, she says, hi, Nauru, uh, Suyana and Leon. My question is for Nauru. Uh, success has many meanings. What metrics will you be using um, to measure this as a successful model? Look, so that's that's a good question, Gail. Thank, thanks for actually asking because it's it's very important for any business, and and I, I've been fortunate moving in many countries and and establishing the businesses. The importance is is sustainability. That's an important. If the metrics, if you want know, to put some metrics together, the end point what you need to look at is not what you're going to get out of that. Is what how sustainable you are, and the trust equation which we I believe in. Sion believes in that metric, the trust metrics needs to be in there. That's the bottom line of it. And I hope, and I hope that whoever is listening to this needs to understand that needs to have a passion to do it, had a has needs to have a will to put hard yard in it. It's very difficult in the beginning. But if you put those in the metrics, then it's very easy. Girl. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Niru. Uh, so Jan, is there anything that you'd like to add? That's uh, what Niru had to say. Uh, I think I think um, Niru said it very well. I, I think we, Niru, Leon, and myself have lots of conversations about this, and it's about growing the business nice and slow, um, getting all the systems and processes right, um, working closely with Melbourne Water to do that, and then 
as we build foundations, grow. And, and for, for the, the gentlemen of Waraparing, I mean, I'd love to see them develop and grow, and we all want to see that, but we want it to be done right so that it goes on for generations. And that's what we want to see. We want to see a legacy or generational impact. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Gail, for the question. Um, I am conscious of time, so we'll take uh, one last question uh, before we might wrap things up. Um, and the next one, and the final question is from Graham. And he says, we see a lot of joint ventures uh, that are 51 and uh, 49. Uh, why is this a joint venture as opposed to 100% owned? Um, Leon, I'll let you have this one. Um, I, I guess it's been a, a commitment from from everyone, sort of right from the start. Um, you know, obviously, I'm, you know, I've, I've been watching, you know, in my previous job, um, you know, within in the AFL world, and you know, fortunate to you know travel the country almost on a weekly basis, and you know, I, I've been watching, you know, the Indigenous procurement policy. Um, um, you know, and how it's evolved and, and been, you know, rolled out right across the country. And and I was very clear sort of right from the start. And and I and I guess uh, I guess it, it wasn't my my own decision, but it was I was fortunate to create this strong relationship and connection and trust with Melbourne Water. And that's that's how they've seen fit that they will support and I, and I think it's really important that we understand that part of the mechanism that they are supporting a 100% Indigenous business startup. Um, I, I, Soyan and, and Nauru could probably add value to to the question, Graeme, um, but that, that's that's yeah, that's where I, I see it fitting in. Mm. Uh, I, I think I add, can I just add quickly? Uh, the reason to do this is to to make them accountable for their own journey, make them responsible, accountable. The trust equation plays a big part. We are there to support, but you are going to do the hard yard. You're going to walk it. So you don't need anybody's 40, 49, 51% support. You can do it. We trust you. We will support you, but you need to walk. And that's the reason that 100% owned. And, and I'm, I'm absolutely, uh, absolutely proud about it that they took that challenge and said, yep, we'll do it. And, and just to add Absolutely. to that, uh, Graham's question is a great one, but I just want to clarify the question because um, the the training program is a collaboration between Melbourne Water, Warapering and Aquametra Services, but <clears throat> Warapering, the business, is a 100% Aboriginally owned business. So in the start, we are here to support and, and collaborate and, and help Warapering get off onto a good footing but it is a hundred percent Aboriginally owned construction business. And that's important yeah. for us because this is a true initiative for Aboriginal Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I must have, I might, I may have sort of misread the question a little bit there because I'm reading it now. Why is this a joint venture as opposed to a hundred percent Indigenous owned business? The, the project, Waraparing Civil Project, is a, is a joint venture where Melbourne Water and Aquametro Services are supporting us to get us to the point um, this, at the start of March, um, of, of them supporting us to get us to that to that line of starting up a 100% Indigenous-owned company. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers the question, Graham. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you, Graham, uh, for the questions, and thanks uh, to everyone that submitted um, any questions today. Uh, we did get a few more, however, we've had, run out of time, so uh, we'll be sure to forward those questions on um, to yourselves and. Uh, whenever you get a chance, if we could, um, you know, just kind of clear those up, uh, that would be great. So um, before we run out of time, just want to thank uh, yourself, Leon, uh, Suyan and Nauru um, for joining us this morning. You had a really engaging presentation and, you know, so, some themes really arising, which I'm sure resonates with Kinaway members um, and anyone else who, who has joined us this morning. So, again, on behalf of Kinaway and our members, we want to thank, uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, James. for the opportunity, James. Cheers. Yeah. It's our pleasure. Uh, and for those tuning in, uh, thanks for joining us. We all hope you enjoyed uh, this morning's presentation. Uh, and don't forget to keep an eye out for our upcoming webinars. Uh, if you do wish to attend these, please jump onto the Kinaway website to register your interest. Um, and again, if you wish to catch up on the previous Kinaway TV panel discussions or webinars, jump onto the Kinaway Facebook and YouTube channels where you'll be able to access them. Um, until then, don't forget to check out any support services Kinaway is on offer through our website. Uh, fill out the Kinaway Pulse Check survey and leave a like on today's video, subscribe and turn on the notifications. Uh, thanks again to all who joined us today and we'll catch you all on Friday.